And we're back once again at chapter 17, uh, I believe we're at verse 8 of Second Kings. And walked in the statutes of the heathen whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel and of the kings of Israel which they had made. And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against the Lord their God. And they built them high places in their cities from the tower of the watchmen to the fenced city. And they set them up images and groves in every high hill and under every green tree. And there they did burn incense in all the high places, as did the heathen whom the Lord carried away before them, and wrought wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger. For they served idols, whereof the Lord had said unto them, You shall not do this very thing. Uh, pretty much to the point right there, verse 13. Yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah by all the prophets and by all the seers, saying, Turn ye from you and your evil ways, and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law which I commanded your fathers, and which I sent to you by my servants the prophets. Notes. Oh, gee, how many prophets were there? Uh, there were some before Isaiah. Genesis, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Samuel, Ezra, Nehemiah. Uh, well, I'm not even going to count them all, but there was quite a few of them anyways. But the bottom line is, is that they were warned dozens of times, and we're going to cover all of those prophets. They were amply warned, and they just simply ignored it. Verse 14. Sorry for that pause there, but I had to think a little bit. Notwithstanding, they would not hear, but hardened their necks, like to the neck of their fathers that did not believe in the Lord their God. No. Their problem was unbelief, and the problem now is unbelief. They did not believe in the cross of Christ then, and they do not believe in the cross of Christ right now. Rather sad. Verse 15. And they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers and his testimonies which he testified against them. And they followed vanity and became vain and went after the heathen who were around about them concerning whom the Lord had charged them that they should not do like them. Notes. When Israel rejected God's statutes, they adopted the statutes of the heathen and they walked in them. The ways of the Lord are rejected Religious man must ever adopt the ways of the world. In other words, they have to kind of make a justification for why they have to do this. And they have to try to come up with a good reason for their behavior, which they never actually can do, coincidentally. Verse 16. And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God and made them molten images, even two calves, and made a grove and worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served Baal. Notes. Here we have this uh, uh, statue of a male phallus being bowed to as a god of creation. And they're paying more attention to the stars in the heavens than they are of the Lord. There is no low that a religious man will sink to if his eyes are not on the true God. Verse 17. And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire and used divination and enchantments and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Notes. Uh, passing through the fire once again as they were throwing people into a cauldron and other such things such as this, but ultimately they were being burned alive. They were serving Baal, probably even Molech as well. And divination and enchantments, they were singing songs, asking for evil spirits to do things for them. Uh, they basically willingly became slaves of Satan himself. You can definitely see the spiritual degradation becoming worse and worse. And it's a theme that continues to this very hour. Verse 18. Therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight and there was none left but the tribe of Judah only. Notes. 
Now the tribe of Judah stands for the kingdom of the two tribes of Judah and Benjamin, into which the greater part of the tribes of Dan and Simeon had also been absorbed. And this became now exclusively God's peculiar people. Uh, the object of his love and of his care and of his mercy, unfortunately, they, well, verse 19. Also, Judah kept not the commandments of the Lord their God, but walked in the statutes of Israel which they made. Notes. Even though Judah actually lasted for some 133 years longer, still they ultimately lost their way as well. Verse 20. And the Lord rejected the seed of Israel and afflicted them and delivered them into the hand of spoilers until he had cast them out of his sight. Notes. Well, the seed of Israel, which, well, this refers to both kingdoms of Israel and Judah. Keep in mind that Israel and Judah should not actually be separate. They should all be Israel anyways. And I'll go ahead and just read the verse again. And he afflicted them and delivered them into the hand of spoilers until he had cast them out of his sight. This is saying, after the captivity of the ten tribes as recorded here, Judah as well went deeper into sin and finally had to be destroyed and taken into captivity as well. All of this shows the total control of the Lord in all matters. He could deliver them into the hands of their enemies or into the position of victory. Uh, whichever depended on, upon their obedience or disobedience. Verse 21. For he rent Israel from the house of David, and made Jeroboam the son of Nebat king. And Jeroboam drove Israel from following the Lord, and made them sin a great sin. Notes. They didn't have proper leadership, and, well, all is lost. One can be a religious leader, or one can be a prophet. One cannot be both. The former uh, seeks to appease the people, while the latter seeks to obey God. Regrettably, we presently have far too many religious leaders. All it is is a bunch of people really just jumping through hoops, making up a bunch of laws, and telling people how to live their lives when the truth of the matter is, is the only way you can live your life properly is by serving Christ. I believe we're at verse 23, or no, 22. For the children of Israel walked in all the sins of Jeroboam, which he did, they departed not from them. Notes. Now keep in mind, we also have the calf-worshipping and we also have Baal, and we also have Molech, and there's no telling what other idols that they served. They had high places all over the place. And keep in mind that high places were pretty much, pretty much altars that were very, very beautiful and ornate sometimes. And uh, they would serve these other gods, and they basically had just began to slowly but surely ignore the temple, ignore the statutes of God, ignore the law of God, Ignore the Ten Commandments. Ignore the prophets. They just, they just basically blotted God out of their lives. And, uh, well, the results were not good. Verse 23. Until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight, as he had said by all his servants, the prophets, so was Israel carried away out of their own land to Assyria unto this day. Notes. Well, the time of the writing of this account, which was probably around 570 years before Christ, by which time the southern kingdom of Judah had also been carried away into captivity. But be that as it may, verse 24, and I think we'll be finishing up. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon and from Cutha and from Ava and from Hamath and from Sepharvaim and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. Notes. Well, this is the beginning of the New Testament Samaritans. These individuals subsequently intermixed with the Jews who returned from captivity. And hence, this culminated in what you would call a mixed breed. The Jews in Jesus' day would basically have nothing to do with these men. And we must pick up in chapter 17, verse 25 of the book of 2 Kings. Thank you, and God bless.